so today is the first day of my no scroll week yeah this week i'm trying not to go on any social media like not scroll on anything just because i feel like since every day is the same for me like i go to work i have the same amount of time in the morning and then in the evening to do stuff i want to do sometimes it's just hard to continue being so disciplined and on top of it at least for me like I don't understand how people are disciplined forever. I normally have like a week in a month where I'm just like, I just want to lay and like scroll on YouTube shorts or something and like just watch the most brain rotting stupid videos because it feels like more effort otherwise to like actually put my attention towards something that like requires me to use my brain cells. So sometimes I'm just feeling it so much. I'm like, all right, I need to take a step back and like get it together. I was stuck in a reading rut. Like I was starting these books and I liked them, but I just couldn't bring myself to want to sit and read. And then I started reading the shards again for the second time. Let's ignore <laughs> the barking. It was what it took to pull me out of my rut because it's just so good. And <laughs> I read it in like five days. But yeah, I decided that maybe I'll just vlog this week. I'm not really doing anything crazy. I am going to some Airbnb with my parents and our family friends to watch the eclipse. I um pack everything and I should be doing some work on my computer before going, but I'm actually gonna mix because I haven't mixed in forever. So I'm in the middle of nowhere for the eclipse and we have this place that's letting us use their bathroom cemetery and the best part is that I heard that during the eclipse cows will go to sleep for the two minutes because I think it's nighttime and I was like oh my god I want to be next to a cow for the eclipse well can you see what the fuck that is yep can you see what those are over there too Fucking cows, bro. <laughs> They're all coming over here. Yeah. 
so I basically don't have anything that I need to do. I'm currently helping my aunt like build a website and I have already done the work that I need to do for that. And obviously like I already had work today and I'm done with that. So I don't know, it's like I always feel like ever since I graduated, when I have nothing to do, I still feel like, okay, but I should be like learning something, doing something, reading something, being productive. Um, because it just feels like a waste. Like I don't feel like any free time should be wasted, especially since I work nine to five. It's like any time that I have for myself, I should be maximizing to like reach my full <laughs> potential. Um, so that being said, I'm about to sesh and then who knows what'll happen because like I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna go and read after I sesh, but there is a chance that I will look for something like in my bathroom, something like that, and then end up rearranging everything in my bathroom or deep cleaning, you know what I mean? Um, the thing about me though is like, I only take like one and a half hits. <coughs> and that way I keep my tolerance so low. And I'm done. So the sun is setting, but I really wanna go for a walk because it's so nice out. So I'm going to do that. And um, interesting enough, I used to like love going out for a walk with my AirPods in or my headphones on, you know, or so I thought like I love putting a podcast on. I love um, listening to music when I'm walking. And the truth is I actually don't like it at all. And um, I normally leave my phone at home, but I think I'm just gonna bring it because that's what I need to do for a vlog, right? <laughs> What? She literally wants me to take her in the car. <laughs> like, no. Clearly I forgot to take any videos. I just took this picture and then I took the next clip and then after that is me the next morning. I just have zero timestamps. I also just realized I didn't talk about the eclipse at all. The eclipse was an unbelievable experience and I, what was most in insane to me was that in the 15 minutes before 100% coverage and the 15 minutes after, I came so drained of energy that I kept falling asleep in my chair and as it got closer and closer to 100% when I would stand up to go and, and look at the cows and stuff, it felt like when you stand up too fast and you're dizzy and you can't see, that's how I felt and it felt kind of like I was in a dream like when you're trying to run in a dream run away or like do something in a dream and you can't see you can't hear like you don't have your senses all in working order um it was just so bizarre but then when that 100% coverage happens it is like out of this world you take your glasses off and you just see this shining beautiful ring and I'm so glad that we went and we're in the middle of nowhere around no other people to see it. Um, so that's my talk about the eclipse. The last thing I want to talk about is Blue Lard by Vladimir Sorokin. Um, I was on page 20 for the entire weekend. I didn't really read any of this because I felt like I couldn't move forward. It was just too abstract. I couldn't tell where the contours of the story were. Like, in my last video, I talk about books with this kind of otherworldly quality and books that you kind of just have to surrender to, and that is the only way that they will make sense to you. And I knew this was one of them, but I felt like maybe it was just out of reach for me. Um, it was just too weird, too, you know, I was just too lost. I didn't know what was happening. I was trying to grasp things, and that's the problem. I was trying too hard to understand. And then I literally made note right here. That is where the book started to come. Like it started working for me. It was like, I'll just read the passage. 
So before this passage, I was confused as to who was in the scene, what was going on, because I had thought that all of these characters were like in this break room in the lab, like sharing a drink. And then all of a sudden, I didn't realize like this is what happens when people are talking when I'm reading or something like that. I just become distracted, but keep moving um, through the page. And I don't really know how I got where I ended up. I was like, okay, let me just keep pushing. I don't know what's going on, but let me keep pushing. And then we reach this moment where this person reveals this sewing machine with three holes that fit people into them. And it can sew three people together at a time and then keep stitching another three to them forever. And it wasn't until I read that that I felt like, this is the first thing that makes sense to me. I urge all of you to pay attention to the needles. The Count cried out, moving into an intensely aroused state. This is really stunning, really truly, it's unbelievable. C'est curieux, ma parole. Such needles, needles, and everyone, 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 hollow from within, but the toughest, strongest, most sensitive with, but extremely within, but the toughest, strongest, most sensitive with, but extremely within. Yes, that is repeated as many times as I just read it. Extremely nimble, like a silkworm, and inside, the inside, packed with opium, sir, and not even opium, but an opiate salve, and by way of the holes, the tiniest of holes, it's made to ooze, to seep into the blood and ease the pain during the time of the sewing, and even, even, not pain, pleasant, extremely pleasant feeling. I want to be the first in the Trinity who's with me. And it wasn't until I read that, that I felt things click into place. And then I, I continued reading and, um, sorry, this is just a stunning paragraph that I want to read. It's very short. So there were three people that got stitched together. They left Russia and settled down in Switzerland where they lived happily and in harmony for four more years. Larissa was the first to die. An hour after her death, Bakov strangled himself. Both of the corpses were successfully cut off the Count's body and buried. The Count himself, Dmitry Alexandrovich Reshetovsky, <laughs> I butchered that, and this and this, he for a little while, but not entirely, and not for all eternity. So if you think that didn't really make sense, that's exactly what it is on the page, yet all together it like comes together and now it's like I see the contours I see the logic of the story even though it's bizarre um so now I'm moving along very well <laughs> I'm currently laying on this ball to like help my neck um so ignore that I also forgot to mention that yesterday I finished the audiobook um, on Palestine. It's Noam Chomsky and somebody else. Uh, it's like, since it's an audiobook, I just completely forget about it since I don't physically see it. But I thought it would be worth mentioning that I finished it. Um, it was very informative. But towards the end, I just kind of checked out because it's like, this was from 2014, I think. And, like, the last chapters, the one is, um, basically, like, a letter to the UN. One is, like, talking about a ceasefire where nothing ceases. And it's just, like, that's what's happening right now. And I just couldn't take it emotionally to know that we've been in this situation before. Except now it is, like, a hundred times more severe and like um what's the word like pressing and terrible um but definitely like the first half of the book where it's all of this historical context background dismantling like the rhetoric pro um zionist rhetoric and all of that was great you can't eat your egg.